Hi, in this video I'm just going to make one more where I'm going to practice some tools with you that you're bound to run into as you try to take your own data and match it up with a map and uh, this is something you're going to have to do whenever you do your own original spatial econometrics kind of project. Um, you want to be able to create a shape file with your data in there and match it up and be able to visualize your data. So what I'm going to do here is uh, the Economic Research Service of the U.S. Department of Agriculture just released the 2013 County Rural Urban Continuum Codes. This is taking every county in the United States and assigning it a number from 1 to 9. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to import those into a county map and we're going to make a, a chloropleth color map. So, what we're going to do in, in this video is we're going to practice some skills. We're going to um, open a map. We're going to export a portion of the map. We're just going to look at the 48 contiguous states, counties. Uh, we're going to create a new field in the map so that we can bring in some new data and match it. Uh, because this map as it exists does not have any way to match the two. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, then we're going to import and match the data using a plugin to map window, which is free. If you've been watching my videos, you already have that. Uh, and it uses a plugin called Swift D, which is also free. So I'm using everything free here. It won't cost you a dime. Uh, then we're going to make a chloropleth map, and we're going to look at it. So to get started, what do you need to do to follow along? You need the map window program. Go to my website. I've got links to everything very easily here. So here's a list of the things you need. Map window, the Swift D plugin, county map extracted to a folder. So you're going to need a program to do that, uh, 7-zip or uh, WinZip. There's a lot of them out there. Um, some operating systems will do it automatically for you and the county rural urban code file. Let me show you my website here where you can have links to all this stuff very easily here. Spatial.berkeyacademy.com Spatial.berkeyacademy.com and uh, if, you want, if you need the map window program, the link's right here. If you need a program to extract compressed files, 7-zip right here, free also. Um, here's a link to the county map, free also. Uh, now, also, uh, the video I'm recording now is called GIS 7. It's right down here. Uh, GIS 7, Mapping County Rural Urban Continuum Codes. Uh, if you want to download the county uh, map file, here's a link right here. If you want to download the Rural Urban Continuum Codes, I have two versions. The original link, if you want that and a link to my slightly cleaned up version. Let me show you that. Let's look at what that is real quick. I recommend downloading mine, but uh, you always want to be able to, to have the original there as well. Uh, so it's got each county, oh, about 3,200 counties uh, in the U.S. And um, what I've done in my file, the the ERS, Economic uh, Research Service, has a file with the 93 code and the 2003 code. I added the 2013 code if you wanted to see how things have been changing. Now watch out because the 93 code and the 2003 code are slightly different. In 1993 it's possible to have a zero, which means a really, really large area. In 2003 and 2013, the lowest number is 1, which means a very, very large metro area with more than a million people. Uh, so in my Excel file here that I created, I cleaned up these uh, variable names to be simpler because uh, you, can't, you can't read in long, wordy sentence descriptors of variables. Uh, into a map file, uh, it cr it'll create problems. So this is one tab. I have some notes about exactly what I did to the file to change it. Some documentation that came with the original 2013 Rural Urban Continuum codes from the ERS. Uh, also, I separated out the Puerto Rico records because I just didn't want to bother with mapping with those. But they're there just in case you need them for something. So. Anyway, let's get started with our mapping. So download all this stuff, have it handy, and now let's get to our mapping. So what we want to do first is we want to uh, open up 
map window. So let me do that real quickly here. Okay, so when map window pops up, uh, here's a little uh, welcome screen where you can add data to the project if you want, or you can just close it out. Let's do that because normally uh, I like to add data by adding this little green plus sign here. So we want to add a layer. Then you want to navigate to the folder where you extracted the uh, county map files. And, and when you look in there, as always, you'll see between three and six uh, different files. The one you want is the shape file, and that's the only one that's going to be showed here, shown here whenever you uh, want to open the map. So let me zoom in. Let's click to uh, uh, the little zoom button, the plus sign with a magnifying glass, and we can draw a little box around here and make it larger. So this uh, map has Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico and the uh, the continental 48 states and what I want to do here is just focus on the 48 states so uh, let's save a new map that uh, is just the 48 states so to do that very very quickly here we want to find our little select uh, balloon here so select and I'm going to draw a little box around the continental 48 US states uh, I'm holding down my left mouse button and then I'm going to release it and that highlighted all of those and if we want to save those see this little tab named toolbox here layers and toolbox click the toolbox button and uh, under which one is it uh, vector operations standard there's a little option here that says export selection there are a few different ways to do this, but export selection. So double click that and a little uh, dialog comes up and it says, what shape file do you want to export the selected features from? And it says we've selected 3,109 shapes and what file do you want to save it to? So let's, uh, and where do you want to save it to? So let's click this little open folder thing here. Let's save it in the same file folder uh, as the originals here and usually it'll give it a name like selection or selected feature something like that. Uh, you can give it any name you want here. Let's just call it uh, 48 state counties something like that and you can have spaces in there that's fine uh, for a file name no problem there. So save and then hit OK. Now it asks us, do you want to add the new layer to the map? Click yes. We could go and add it with the plus sign now if we wanted to. So now it added a new purple layer here. Let's click the little layers tab again instead of toolbox and we see the purple layer. Now if we want to get rid of the old one that has Puerto Rico and Hawaii and Alaska there, there are a couple, th couple ways we could do that. We can just uncheck the little box for the gray one and that will not display it. Or we could go even further and remove it from memory, close it down. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's right click on it and say, um, let's see, remove layer and now it's gone. So now we just have the pink one. And now if we want to zoom in to what remains, we can click the zoom button, zoom in, and draw a box as we did before, or we can just click the extent button. Extent will zoom in on everything that's in the maps that we uh, that we are displaying right now. So that's step one. Now step two. We have this uh, Excel file here that has data in it that we want to bring into the map. Now the standard way to reference um, areas in maps in the United States is called a FIPS code, F-I-P-S. It stands for like Federal Information Something Code. Um, and for counties, it's a FIP, the FIPS code is five digits long. The first two represent the state and the last three represent the county number and when you combine them together you have the county FIPS code um, that tells you what state and what county you're in 
and that's what we want to try to match on here so let's see whether we can do that now some map files will have that kind of FIPS code already this one doesn't so let's right click on the label here right click and say attribute table editor left click on that and what we see here are the fields that we have so um, we have state and county and oh I already cheated and I created this FIPS code Oop, let me uh, let me get rid of that all right let me show you how to do that that's a good thing to know anyway I created this this wasn't already in the map file so let's go to edit remove field FIPS okay this will remove the field yes now again why did I do that because I created that a minute ago I want to show you how I created it though here we see the state code two digit county code two digit but there's nothing that looks just like this five digit code so there's nothing we can bring bring in to match on that's what we want to try to do here is create this FIPS code from scratch since we don't have it now we have the two pieces so how can we create it well real quickly we go to edit and we want to add a new field give it a name I will just called it FIPS what type of variable is this double integer or string double means it's a a number that has decimal places integer integer string you're thinking about a word now we're going to choose string why string well because let's look back over here 01001 is not a number because it has a leading zero uh, and if you notice in Excel, it's got a little green triangle here and a warning sign. And it's telling us the number in this cell is formatted as text. Well, yes, that's correct. And it has to be. Otherwise, you will lose the leading zero, and that will mess up your FIPS code. Because the state 01 is Alabama. So you have to keep these as text. So what we want to do is uh, take this text variable and create a text variable or a string in map window and width it's not really important what the width is uh, as long as it's at least five wide uh, the only downside to having it wider than five is uh, it takes up a little bit more memory uh, I'm just gonna leave that at 10 but we could change that to 8 or 7 or 6 or 5 if we wanted to but that's not a huge deal in terms of memory so now we have a blank variable now what do we do well we want to combine this 04 with this 003 so what we want to do is go to the um, field calculator there's a picture of a calculator here or we can go to tools field calculator tool either way and um, this calculator that we're in right now is dealing with mathematical calculations see the little blue line here it says switch to string textual calculator that's what we want so we switch to the string calculator and it asks us what's the destination field FIPS that's where we want to store the result of what we're getting ready to do here so it says FIPS equals what do we want to do well we want to say very simply this isn't math but it's it's representing this kind of like math what we want to do is take the state and then add the county to it squash them together there so state and believe it or not plus sign and county and different programs will have different kind of lingo for doing this kind of operation and then assemble let's look at what it did 04 and 003 is now 04003 that's exactly what we want now we just click close and we can apply and then we can close this down and we have a FIPS code that will match up with these FIPS codes alright good enough close um, now what we want to do I'm gonna close this Excel worksheet here uh, sometimes map programs are picky it won't it won't let you read in variables from a worksheet if it's open so let's close it now we're going to use the Swift D 
plugin, Swift D plugin. And if you go to my website, I have a link to the Swift D plugin um, right here under GIS2. Uh, I talk about in that video how to use, uh, install and use the Swift D plugin. So if you don't have it, download it and install it. Watch that video if you need help. And uh, the Swift D plugin here, go to plugins and then Swift D. So what you want to do is make sure that there's a green uh, light here on the little shape beside Swift D. And when you do that, you get a new menu option for Swift D. And what we want to do is import data. Import Excel, DBF, or Access. And it's giving me an error. Okay. I'm just going to ignore that. I've had that happen before with the Swift D plugin, and um, I just kept going, and it wasn't a problem. So let's just give it a try here. So the Swift D uh, import plugin, click the kind of file you have. We have a .xls, and uh, we want to find that file. So let me go find that file real quickly. So you want to download that file, and then just find it on your computer. All right, and uh, I called it uh, Rural Codes 9303.13 Clean, and it asks, uh, what worksheet do we want to import from? Is it the one called 2013 Documentation? No. Is it the one called 9303.13 Codes? Yes. And it shows us a little preview of what's in that worksheet. Um, now. Um, yeah, we actually do have an error here. Um, it's not finding the field in our shapefile to code. So let me shut this down real quickly and reopen everything. Okay, so I just closed map window, reopened. I'm going to Swift D here, import Excel. I didn't get that error this time. Um, XLS, and then let me find the file again here real quickly. So you get to watch watch when things mess up for me, just like they will in when you do it. So just stay calm. So not 2013 documentation. Yes, 9303.13 codes. And see, now we have a list of the fields in our shape file, which is what we need. And we need to click FIPS, and it'll turn blue over on the shape file. Click FIPS on the imported data. It's not important that these two variables have the same name, but it is important that they be able to match. And you can't match, generally, you can't match a numerical field to one that's stored as text uh, in the other place so they either have to both be text or both be a number and they have to be identical um, select column to be imported from the spreadsheet so what I want to import is the 2013 rural urban continuum code it only lets you import one field at a time um, and if, if we wanted to import these other fields we could just do this same process again and again and again so step four click add and it says it's a large data set. It's going to take a lot of time. Do you want to wait? Yes. Now, I'm going to pause the video. This will take uh, on my computer about one and a half minutes. And then I'll come back. All right, so it's done uh, thinking about this. And it says data column attached successfully. Hit OK. And then if you want to go ahead and add another variable, let's just go ahead and do that while we're here. Um, Select a different column to be imported. Maybe we want the 2000 population or the 2010 population. So if you do, uh, let's say 2010 population, click the drop down box and say uh, 2010 population here. Step four, add. Okay, and it warns us it's going to take another minute and a half. Yes, I'll pause the video so you don't have to wait. All right, so here we get data column attached successfully again. Now, whenever this happens, let's hit OK, and let's close this box. Let's hit the red X. You want to make sure that it actually happened correctly. Double check your work, because 
really, guys, uh, bad things happen all the time when you try to match data like this. So I highly recommend when you do this, let's look at that attribute table that we just added the data to. So right click and go to um, attribute table editor. I mean, we don't really want to edit it. We just want to view what's going on here. And so here are the two columns that we added, 2013 code and 2010 population. And what you want to do is make sure that there aren't any missing values. One depressing fact is that um, when, when this matches, when it loads in the extra data, if it can't find a match, it doesn't leave it blank. It, it, it calls it a zero. And you know what kind of problems that can cause in your data. So you want to make sure to double check. One way to quickly double check what's going on here is uh, you can go to a column and you can right click on the column and you can sort it ASC, sort ascending. And you can see if there are any zeros. And here it says we have one uh, shape here that has a zero for the code and zero for 2010 population. That means that it didn't find a match. And this one is for Miami-Dade County, which is actually a pretty large county in the United States. Now what's going on here, um, there are a lot of counties that change name, and whenever they change name, the Census Bureau and all their wisdom gives them a different code. And so Miami-Dade County is now just simply called Miami County, I believe. Either that or just Dade County. Um, one or the other. It changed names. I think it used to be Dade County, and now it's Miami-Dade County, so it has a different code. So what we're going to have to do here is for this one that's missing, we're lucky that there's only one that's missing, um, it, uh, we have to put that in by hand. So let's, let's just do that real quickly. Let's get our, um, open up our Excel sheet again, and let's find it and enter in this data by hand. So this is alphabetical by state. Um, let's see, Georgia, go back up Florida, and um, let's see. Okay, so here's Miami-Dade County, and in this list it is uh, 12086. And in this list, 12086. Very curious why it couldn't do that match. Let me look at this real quickly. All right, I solved our problem. I didn't solve our problem, but I figured out what happened. Let me, let me zoom in here um, so that you can see what I'm seeing. Um, Remember what I said, that you can't match a numerical variable to a text variable. For some reason, I have no idea why, this one value here does not have a little triangle on it like the other ones do. And again, in, in Excel, this triangle has a warning. The number in this cell is formatted as text or preceded by an apostrophe. This one, for some reason, is just a number. It's just a regular number here, and so because it's a number, it can't be matched to the text. And so that's why we have the zero for the population and the zero for the, uh, for the 2013 code. So anyway, we can fix that by hand. The uh, 2013 code is a 2. So let me um, let's go back to Miami-Dade County here. 2013 code is a 2, and the population is 2,253,362. So let's put those values in here. And uh, to edit it, we should just be able to type in the box here, highlight the 0, and uh, type code is 2. And the uh, 2010 population is, don't put, the, don't put the commas like we saw in the Excel. Um, Two two five three three six two. All right, and it automatically resorted it down here since it's no longer a zero. So always double check your work. Uh, I see errors all the time in in people's papers because they 
when they do matches, things tend to get garbled. Uh, it's also good to spot check one or two of these just to make sure that they, they were matched correctly. Um, it's not a guarantee, but maybe pick out one of your counties like um, 18031. Make sure that in your data set that's a 1 and has 50,047 people. We'll just trust that that's right. And let's go to our last step here because, uh, as always, this video is starting to run long. Let's click Apply. I'm not sure, but I think in Map Window that actually commits the changes that we made and saves it permanently. And close. Now let's make a quick chloropleth map. Uh, coloring these based on the rural urban continuum code. There are a few ways to do this. Um, the way I like to do is to right click on the little uh, gray box here. So I left clicked. That's not what, what I wanted. Right click, go to properties, and then go to um, categories, and click the variable that you want to make the map based on. Let's uh, do 2013 code. And how many categories do we want? Well, I want one color for each different category, and the categories go from 1 to 9. So there are 9 categories here. Or we can click Unique Values, and it will figure that out. So Unique Values, and we want to choose some kind of color scheme here. We could do pink to green, for example. Why not? And Generate. And here it has generated um, and done a little frequency distribution for how many are in each category. So there are 431 ones, 376 twos. And pink here means very uh, urban uh, counties, and green means very rural. And so that might be an appropriate way to do this. And hit Apply, and OK. And now we have a map. Not very pretty with the pink and the green there, uh, but a map of the rural versus the urban counties in the United States. And of course, we see the Midwest or these uh, very greenish areas out here. I'm going to end the video now. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, in the next uh, videos, we're going to start um, making some contiguity files. Uh, so that we can begin to run some spatial econometrics. See you next time. Good luck.